In today's video, we're gonna be focusing about how your tennis movement could really help your golf swing. So I'm gonna be focusing on two simple areas, one that is really gonna help your follow through, your finish position, and one that's gonna help you hit that driver a little bit higher, a little bit longer from that in to out and rising blow that we're really looking for. Stay tuned for more info. Welcome back to the True Golf Academy. You've joined me, John Watts, today at Branston Golf and Country Club. And there is a reason why I've got a tennis racket in my hand. So I'm gonna be talking you through how actually focusing on a couple of movements that we'd probably make quite instinctively with a racket in our hand is actually gonna help us with our golf swing. I'm gonna be focusing on two areas. So one area is gonna be this finished position, this follow through, rotating my body a little bit more open through impact. And the second area is gonna be, especially if we're struggling with the driver, it's gonna be talking about that rising blow and that more in to out path. So really relevant if you're struggling with your driver, or if you're someone who creates more of a fade or a slice or a downward blow, this is really going to help you. So let's start with the first part here, the follow through. So if you were serving in tennis, you would start with your pressure onto your, onto your lead side course, you would there. But as you rock back, your pressure would move towards your trail foot you would throw the ball and you would probably stay pointing at the ball while it's in the air. And as soon as that racket has struck the ball in your serve, your head and your body is rotating to face the other side of the net. So your body is following and your head is following the flight of the ball. You could think of it as watching the ball. How many golfers, however, do we see where they're hitting the golf ball and they're trying to keep their head down and fixed on a point here, even though the ball's gone? Imagine serving in tennis that way. I'd point at the ball, I'd strike the ball and I kept looking where the ball had gone. My body hasn't rotated open. I haven't set enough pressure into my lead leg. So that is my foot that's closest to the target. And I'd hit it in row Z. I would not get that ball going down and definitely not down with any real speed there. So as soon as we've struck the ball, we've got to allow our body to rotate uh, watching the golf ball. So I really dislike, if you've watched my channel before, You'll have heard me say this, and I know it's true with a lot of other pros talk about this, players telling other golfers, keep your head down, keep your head still. We really want to find, watch the club hit the ball. You'll never see it. But as soon as you've struck that golf ball, we want your body to rotate. We want your body to start to turn. Unless you're Mr. Flexible or Mrs. Flexible, very fit, it's really gonna cause you some issues keeping your head down for a long, long time. We really want to, as soon as we've struck the ball, allow our body to rotate. And that feeling of serving in tennis would be a really good one for you. As I said, it's that toss the ball, point at the ball. As soon as you've struck it, your body is rotating towards the target, which is what we really want to see. Second part here with the racket that I'm gonna be talking about is, if you are struggling with the driver, the likelihood is we're striking a little bit too much down and losing some distance. They did a, a test, a uh, robotic test. I can't think where it was performed, so sorry that I'm not quoting you here, but they did a test uh, at your average club head speed with the driver around 85 miles an hour. They kept everything else the same, the strike location, all that changed was the angle of attack. So it went four degrees down, zero and four degrees up and it made 40 yards of difference from the four degrees down to the four degrees up. So a massive, massive difference in terms of carry distance. So with a driver in our hand, unless we're generating super speeds, we are looking for an upward angle of attack ideally. And ideally with a driver, here we're looking for perhaps more of a draw shape again to gain some distance, again, unless you're a really hard hitter. So we're looking for the feeling of our arms actually moving upwards. I get too many golfers where they're trying to strike down, 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 down. So the feeling of a top spin forehand in tennis could really work for you here. My racket arm is actually moving in to out. So from close to my trail thigh pocket here to slightly away from me as my body rotates. So the racket is swinging in to out and rising. And that's definitely a power source rather than my racket arm moving from out to in. 
and down. So that's how I would lob someone there, cut across the ball, cut the legs out of it. It's not a power source. A real powerful move is that top spin forehand in tennis where my racket arm is close to my body to away from my body as my body is rotating, okay, and rising here. This is definitely what we want to feel with a golf ball. Let me go ahead and hit one there. So I'm dying to do it. We want to feel that, that racket arm is moving into our and up on the ball there. And that gives us that top spin forehand, and it's a big, big power source. And my racket arm is moving from low to high. It's rotating, but I'm trying to control it with my body. Some real similarities to what we're talking about with a golf club. So if I grab my driver, what does this mean for us? Well, pretty simple. One, don't keep your head down. Watch the golf ball. So as soon as we've struck the golf ball, allow our head to rotate. There are uh, plenty of elite golfers allowing their head to rotate actually slightly before they hit it and they do pretty good. So don't worry too much, you won't ever see the club strike the golf ball. But that feeling of watching or the thought of watching the golf ball is a really good one. So watch the club hit the ball, watch the ball fly to help full rotation and pressure onto my lead side and I want to get that sensation like I've got the tennis racket in my hand if we're trying to hit a high draw, which would be preferable, I think, for a lot of amateur golfers. We want that feeling that your racket arm is moving into our and up as your body rotates. Obviously, it doesn't keep moving this way and this way and this way because my body is rotating. But that feeling of swinging up and right, I could almost imagine I'm getting that strike on the golf ball like I got the strike with the tennis racket. I'll see if I can put those two parts together. It might be that you only focus on the one. So I'm going to be getting that sensation of striking that top spin forehand in tennis up and right. But as soon as I've struck the golf ball, allowing my head to follow the flight of the golf ball. Let me give it a whirl. That really felt, I actually got that high draw shape. It felt like that club was moving up on the ball. And when I look at my data, I generally get that in a slightly into out path. But I got that sensation. I don't know where I was looking at the time I struck the golf ball, but I got that sensation that I was allowing my head to rotate to follow the flight of the golf ball, which is exactly what I want to get. So that tennis movement could really help us think about what we're doing in our golf swing, especially if you're someone where you're trying to keep your head down, or if you're someone where you're struggling with the angle of attack or the swing path with the driver there, maybe hitting low fade slices, striking down on the golf ball, losing some distance, that feeling of that top spin forehand movement could really help you. If you did enjoy the content of the video, make sure you hit the thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel to never miss a video again. Cheers guys, we'll see you soon.